For this edition of The Observer's Direct, we're in the Central African Republic. The country was torn apart six years ago. There were fears of a bloodbath between Christians and Muslims. Our observers are trying to bring the two communities together. Let's go meet them. March 2013. A Muslim-majority rebel group known as the Seleka seizes power in Bongi. Militias made up mainly of Christians react. Both sides target civilians, often on religious grounds, and there are fears of widespread slaughter. The French army stepped in, and the UN, and the Seleka movement was dissolved. But the country remains profoundly unstable. On May the 1st, 2018, armed men opened fire during mass at the Notre Dame de Fatima Church in Bangui, located on the edge of Kilometer 5, a majority Muslim neighborhood home to armed gangs. Christian Ndota was nearby when it happened. He introduces us to Father Romain, who was at the mass. During the offertory, we saw people running all over the place. We sent people to find out what was happening. They said that Muslims were coming to attack us. They started shooting from that avocado tree. They stayed there. And then they threw a grenade, which fell just here. You can still see damage from the explosion. Seven people were killed, including a priest. Some churchgoers hid or ran away, but for Christian, the attack had nothing to do with religion. They were gangsters. One of them was taken in for questioning, and things got out of hand. There was a rumor going around that he had been arrested or even killed. People over in Kilometer 5, they believed it. They thought, that's it. They've attacked a Muslim. In the last few years, people in this country tend to make everything about religion. That's why the church was attacked, making it look like Muslims were attacking Christians. A furious crowd carried the priest's body to the presidential palace. As often happens in the Central African Republic, there was retaliation. Attackers smashed up a mosque that was under construction in a Christian-majority neighborhood called La Kuanga. The man who had the idea to build the mosque is our observer, a Christian himself, who wanted to ease tensions between the two communities. Around a dozen people, probably around two dozen, came and grabbed pieces of wood and other building materials. You see those doors? They were initially made of iron. And when that was stolen, they were replaced by wooden doors. There were pieces of wood and bricks all over the place. It wasn't the first time the mosque was targeted. It had been destroyed in 2015. But Christian is determined to keep building, with a board including Christians and Muslims. The project relies on volunteers and private donations. A project like this is going to have enemies. We're peacemakers. We believe in non-violence. And we're pro-reconciliation. Christian teaching says that all men are equal. I know that some people don't like me doing this, though. I get a lot of threats. I've even had to go into hiding. When you're fighting a battle, you need something tangible, something concrete. We're doing awareness drives, putting up posters, spreading the word, going on the radio. But we need something concrete, a building, as a symbol. The mosque is on track for completion at the end of 2019, but it's already opened its doors. Today, to the president of the national parliament, who came for Friday prayers. Where did people pray before? When it was destroyed, everyone went to kilometer five for prayers, or they prayed at home. Is this neighborhood a model for reconciliation in the country? Yes, what's happening in Lakuanga is an example the whole country can follow. It's a great example of people getting together and living side by side. But reconciliation has a long way to go in the capital. Some neighborhoods are overrun by armed gangs. 
the government and the UN unable to dislodge them. But in other parts of the city, life is slowly returning to normal. Christian takes us to the Castor and Yaquite neighborhoods. Last year, several gang leaders were killed in violent clashes, but the violence has decreased, and Yaquite's primary school, which has been closed for four years, reopened in September. Have all the kids come back? Not all of them. We started out with 45, and now numbers are increasing gradually. For the moment, we have 100, almost 200. In 2013, we had more than 500. To encourage parents to return their children to school, Christian and Muslim young people got together in January to clean up the grounds, despite years of tension. We said, no, we can't stop here. Let's start thinking differently, so things get back to normal. We decided to draw up a document called a non-aggression pact. The young people convinced the fighters and local leaders to take part in talks and got support from the Archbishop of Bangui. They present their non-aggression pact to local community groups. The main aim is to get armed groups to put down their weapons. Some people have weapons at home. A carpenter, for example, had a grenade at home. His son played with it and it exploded. Disarmament isn't just for the malicious. Everyone has to hand in their weapons and we need to get the local economy going too. If people have nothing to eat, the disarmament isn't going to last. The women like the idea, but they aren't sure it goes far enough. You should tell the people behind the violence to stop. There are people using the gangsters, giving them weapons and money to manipulate them. They turn them into killers. Tensions remain high in the neighborhoods. One of the young people involved in the pact tells us he regularly gets threats. It's tense in the streets too, and dangerous for us to stick around to film the church in Castor. It was set on fire over Christmas. There were rumors that Muslims were behind it, but this time at least, there was no retaliation. Rumors are a scourge in the Central African Republic, spreading by word of mouth, by text message, or on social networks, a simple rumor can turn deadly because of suspicion and retaliation. Activists like Rosmon Zorkowe use their laptops to fight back against messages that can lead to violence. For instance, this statement, published last summer by an unknown organization calling itself the Church Defense League. They are clearly calling on Christians to rise up against Muslims. We will avenge the murders of church leaders and men of God killed in the course of their work so that Muslims too feel in danger in the Central African Republic and especially in Bangui. Rossman's group, the Central African Bloggers Association, published a response. We pointed out that the statements made by this so-called Church Defense League were false and unsubstantiated. The bloggers also focus on images that are shared from phone to phone, images purporting to show Muslim Christian massacres. Here we see several decapitated bodies wearing clothing resembling that worn by Muslims. They're posted with a caption saying, Alert! Massacre of Muslims in Kilometer 5. This is the Central African Republic. And where do these images really come from? They're from Cameroon, not the Central African Republic. Who do you think is behind this kind of bad information and rumors? People linked to an organization or a community and who are deliberately spreading fake news. There are some media sources too that pretty much just broadcast messages of hate. The bloggers have launched a hashtag to label dubious publications, and they're planning a media campaign to warn people of the dangers of fake news and images.
I learned capoeira when I was a refugee, and it changed my life. Vicky Nelson Wakoro is 19. His family fled fighting in their neighborhood and spent three years in a refugee camp in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is my house. We returned in 2016, and that's my family I was with in the refugee camp. Christians, like Vicky, lived alongside Muslim refugees in the camp, and the fighting back home made things tense. When I was in the camp, I heard that Salika Muslims had stirred up trouble in our neighborhood and killed Christians in the camp. That had an impact on the refugees. I became very suspicious of the Muslims. But an association called Abada Capoeira changed things. An instructor taught young refugees capoeira, a non-violent martial arts based on peaceful and inclusive values. When you enter the roda, the ring, you go in with a partner. If it was someone I didn't like, then I might start thinking bad thoughts and I shouldn't spar with him. Our instructor would notice this and force us to get together and play. I realized I'd been wrong. You have to see people in a positive light. They're my brothers. It's very simple. UNICEF uses capoeira in refugee camps worldwide, believing that it helps to emotionally stabilize traumatized children. Back in Bongi, Vicky has co-founded his own association to teach young Christians and Muslims, particularly focusing on those likely to fall in with armed gangs. Here too, the idea has worked. Before I was hostile, I got in fights. I couldn't control myself, but I was told that in Capoeira you don't fight, you protect the weak. I was taught to protect the weak. Before, I didn't mix with our Christian brothers. I kept away from them. But now that I've learned Capoeira, we're together and we share things. The exchange continues each Sunday at Bongi Stadium, where Vicky brings together students from all his classes. Six years after fighting broke out, citizen initiatives are producing their first tangible results in the Central African Republic. But the reconciliation is just beginning, and for now, tensions and the ever-present threat of violence remain part of daily life in the capital.